Hello listeners, watchers, fans, followers, people of the world. Welcome to the first episode of the Women's Cricket Podcast. We promise to bring you A-grade women's cricket content from around the world, but mostly India, really. I'm one of your hosts, Ananya Upendran. I used to play the game, now I write and talk about it. I like to think of myself as a Jill of all trades when it comes to the women's cricket system. I know the game, I know the ecosystem, I know the people within it, but I'm not quite sure where I fit in. I'm happy to introduce you to now my co-host on this podcast. Um, she's a rather famous journalist in the Indian women's cricket circuit, one who has many pronunciations, as many probably as the feathers in her caps. You may know her as Amnesia or Anisha, but I know her as Anisha Ghosh. So, over to you. Hello and welcome to the universe of the Women's Cricket Podcast with Onnesha. That's the correct pronunciation of my name and kudos to Ananya for trying to get that as correct as possible. And Ananya, that's my co-host. I am an independent multimedia journalist, documentary and features producer based in India. And I try to do very many other things, succeed at some of them, fail at many others. And that is is a concoction and amalgamation which also explains the genesis of this podcast because I'm pretty sure many of our listeners and viewers right now must be wondering or all the promotional stuff that we have put out on our social media handles. We've not put out content just yet as far as our podcast proper is concerned, but we have promoted ourselves a fair bit through social media. So what JD has got us to start this enterprise, this creative slash somewhat journalistic enterprise around women's cricket? The short answer is passion for women's cricket. That is something that has driven and come to describe and define the majority of our careers, both our careers. I have been in this industry for close to six and a half years. Ananya has done this for a relatively longer period of time than me. and. One fine night, I did reach out to my co-host Ananya via WhatsApp, trying to gauge her interest and uh, keenness on whether or not she would want to collaborate with me over this creative enterprise that we want to, that I want to give shape over a long period of time. But due to very many other circumstances besides the paucity of time, it didn't quite come to fruition. But Ananya did accept the proposal and she too kind of uh, bought into the reasoning that there isn't a lot of content, consistent content around women's cricket that is centered on Indian women's cricket or the Indian women's cricket team as well as Indian domestic cricket. That should go some way towards explaining the genesis of the Women's Cricket Podcast with Onesha and Ananya. And here we are in the middle of June trying to bring to you the first ever episode of our endeavor. One of the reasons we feel this is the opportune time to launch this podcast is because there is indeed a lot happening around the world of women's cricket. And if you look at how 2022 and 2023 has panned out with the launch of the WPL, there's been an influx, a sudden boom of content that was not seen, never seen in the world of women's cricket previously. So here we are trying to bring you a lot and though our focus will be on Indian women's cricket largely, we will try our best to pack a lot of information in as far as women's cricket taking place in other pockets of the world is concerned. And Ananya is going to tell you more about that. Yeah, well, like Anisha, you said that it, it does feel like there's been so much women's cricket happening over the last couple of years, especially. And I mean, going forward, there's going to be much more. Um, hopefully with an expanded WPL and, and the rest of it, I will continue to dream. But look, um, right now there is, again, so much women's cricket happening. There's so much that is going to happen. You think of the women's ashes, Ireland are going to the West Indies, India are going to tour Bangladesh, New Zealand are going to Sri Lanka. There's a Kwibuka tournament happening in Rwanda. So there's so much to keep track of. Um, but I think something that we do want to focus um, on for this episode um, is something that is currently underway um, in Hong Kong where the India A women's team is featuring in the Women's Emerging Asia Cup, um, which is an eight-team tournament started on Monday 
um, that's the 12th of June, will continue um, until the 21st of June when the final takes place. So um, that's a very, very exciting tournament. We'll feature quite a few capped internationals from across different countries, but um, some very exciting Indian players as well. And the reason we feel we should definitely touch upon the Women's Emerging Asia Cup uh, that's being held in Hong Kong right now because, number one, Hong Kong staged the second edition of the Fair Break Invitational Tournament just a couple of months ago. And India are fielding a squad that is pretty much the same that won the inaugural Under-19 Women's T20 World Cup earlier this year. And if we are to sort of be my focus on one particular aspect around the tournament surrounding the tournament how about focusing on a few players that we think are definitely worth looking out for ananya who would your pick be across all the nations that are participating at the women's asia cup uh, emerging asia cup in hong kong well, I think um, the obvious ones would be the capped players. I think Fatima Sana is playing. I'm very excited to see how she does as captain, new role for her. Um, but I mean, I'm trying to look at uncapped players, people that I saw during the Under-19 World Cup and someone who really stood out for me from Sri Lanka was Dumi Vihanga. Um, she's an all-rounder. She's almost like a carbon copy of Chamari Atapattu. Um, Right arm, off spinner, left hand batter. She she packs a punch. She I mean she wears her hair in a bun, walks around like Atapattu as well. So it's almost like she's a replica of her. Uh, and she is for the under nineteen team as well. She was that. Um, she was their I guess their energizer bunny. She was the one who was kind of um, the energy center almost. And she was the one that made things happen for the under nineteen squad and um, was a big part of. Maybe they didn't do as well as they could have, but she was a big part of their campaign through that tournament. And I think she's a huge prospect for Sri Lankan cricket. So um, she didn't play in the first game, but I hope that as the tournament progresses, she does get a game because I think she is definitely someone for the future for Sri Lanka. Um, and from an Indian perspective, um, I have to go team pacer, team in swinger. Um, Kashvi <laughs> Gautam for me is... Uh, someone that I'm really excited to see. She was unfortunately missed out on that under-19 World Cup squad because you know the, the World Cup was postponed and she was kind of at her peak um, at age group cricket, at age group level, sorry, um, picked up a 10 for um, against Arunachal Pradesh. And in that 2019-20 season, she picked up almost, I think, 70, over 75 wickets in age group cricket. So she was really on the up and up and, and ready for an under-19 World Cup, but unfortunately, couldn't qualify because it was postponed. But I think she's someone who's really developed her game over the last year, a couple, last couple of years, handed the captaincy of Chandigarh after Amanjot Kaur left as well. So there's a bit of responsibility, a bit of understanding of her game as well. She's developed as a middle overs bowler. So even if India do give a spinner the new ball, I think she has the skills to you know continue to do well in the middle overs. So I think those two people for me, uh, not necessarily names that you'd pick when you have Shreyanka Patil and kan Kanika Ahuja and, and those people to look at. But I think for me, these two are people who I think may fly under the radar, but very exciting talents. And um, who are you, I guess, looking forward to watching? One of them has to be somebody you watched very, very closely as a commentator at the Under-19 Women's inaugural T20 World Cup in South Africa who went on to be bought by the Delhi Capitals at the inaugural WPL, but did not feature in a single game. Here's from West Bengal. It's supposed to fill in the big shoes of Julan Goswami in the long-term picture of Indian women's cricket, was the player of the final at the Under-19 Women's T20 World Cup. And the name, remember the name everyone, is Ditash Sadhu. I have been quite flawed by what the world got to see of her, of Titash Sadhu at the Under-19 World Cup. And uh, I did also get to watch her quite closely while I was working at the WPL as a features producer. Um, her working under Meg Lanning, working with some of the more established Indian Pacers, overseas Pacers, including Shikha Pandey. And uh, not just she appealed to me as just a reader of the game, as a student of the game, uh, as a bowler, but her big hitting skills, that's something that she is working on and you can you can tell that she wants to round herself uh, out as as much of a seam bowling all-rounder for the longer term 
picture for Indian cricket as she can. The world did not get a lot of opportunity to watch Titash Sadhu in action following the Under-19 Women's T20 World Cup triumph of India um, in January. But here is an opportunity for everyone around the world to follow the Women's Asia Emerging Cup uh, that's currently taking place in Hong Kong thanks to the fact that it's being live streamed on the Asian Cricket Council's YouTube on Fancode in uh, India. And you can also watch it on uh, the DD Sports Network for those of our viewers and listeners based in India. So, Titash Sadhu is definitely one of the names and uh, the other name would be Murshida Khatun, the left-arm top-order batter who often opens for the Bangladesh senior side, modelled her batting looking up to a certain Smriti Mandana, has featured in a number of world tournaments for Bangladesh, has been rated highly by Anju Jain, the former India captain, come Bangladesh coach, has uh, shown a lot of flashes of brilliance in spurts but hasn't really delivered consistently and here is an opportunity for Murshida Khatun to stamp her authority on the Bangladesh team at a time when you can see their leader as far as the senior team is concerned Nigar Sultana trying to set a statement by taking the power hitting game not just of her own but also the team a notch higher so if Murshida Khatun is able to find that next gear in her batting in terms of how she approaches the power game and how she, how she also approaches the consistency um, element of her batting, I think that's certainly an aspect that can help her improve as a batter and what better an opportunity than facing some of the best that is available in the A group, uh, albeit it features some under-19 players from the Indian side and very many other nations. But Murshida Khatun, I would love for her to succeed in this tournament and get a very large number of runs under her belt so that come the Bangladesh series, home series against the senior Indian women's side, we see her in a more confident avatar facing the likes of Asmriti Mandana, um, Harman Preet Kaur, obviously facing India as a side in totality. Well, the buzz around the Women's Emerging Asia Cup in Hong Kong does give a feeling that a lot of activity is taking place around the next generation of women cricketers. It also does feel like the end of an era for several stalwarts of the women's game who have served the sport diligently, passionately over you know, several decades now because there seems to be a slew of retirements unfolding on the global circuit as well as on the domestic circuit right now. And the latest among stalwarts, absolute greats, to have decided to either call time on their international career or their domestic career is a certain 6 4 taker from a World Cup final, which her side ended up winning at Lords on July 23rd, 2017 against a certain Indian side. And the name is Anya Shotsoul. Ananya, what do we know about that impending retirement? Yeah, well, Anya Shrabsol, who in fact was crowned player of the match in the final of the Charlotte Edwards Cup, which the Southern Vipers won, um, is um, planning to retire or has announced that the end of this um, English domestic season will be um, the end of her domestic career as well. So that's a massive announcement. She did announce her international retirement earlier last year, but the fact that she was continuing to play domestic cricket meant that there were a group of young fast bowlers coming through that Viper squad who could learn from her. Um, but yeah, it's a massive loss for the Vipers. And, and for me personally, for someone who grew up um, kind of admiring her, and I loved it when my teammates called me Anne Anya, um, I, it kind of um, made me feel like shrub soil. So yeah, it's a, it's a big loss, but um, she's contributed so much to the game and has continued to show that she's such a good performer. And obviously that player of the match performance where she bowled beautifully, had the ball hooping around corners as she always does. Um, it's a great way to sign off, I guess, sign off when you're still on top. And one hashtag we are going to definitely promote on the inaugural episode of the Women's Cricket Podcast with Onisha and Ananya is... Hashtag thank you, Anya Shopsol, because here is somebody who has created a legacy of immense value, not just for herself, not just for the England women's cricket team, but also the sport at large, because whatever she's achieved on the field of play and off it, she will be remembered as somebody who inspired 
very many young girls and boys, not just in England, but globally, to take up the sport, to fall in love with the sport. And as far as I am concerned, I will not forget her brave spell in the World Cup final at Lords in July 2017 against India. That six wicket haul will remain etched in the annals of history. To me, it stands for resilience. It stands for the indomitable spirit that we want to look up to in athletes, in fellow humans. So thank you, Anya Shapsol, for inspiring very many who already play the sport, who love the sport. And we wish you happy retirement and hopefully you will stay connected to the sport in as many forms as you possibly can and maybe wield the microphone and also consider taking up coaching because I'm pretty sure there are very many tournaments, <coughs> WPL, not insinuating anything whatsoever that would want your services because you are certainly leaving big boots to fill. And while Anya Shopsol slowly walks into the sunset, her former international team, England women, are gearing up for the big series that's literally waiting at the threshold of the world of women's cricket to begin, and that's the Ashes. And as far as we are concerned, as far as the women's cricket podcast with Anisha and Ananya is concerned, our endeavor is to bring our listeners and viewers as much information, news, views, analysis, interviews, as many of them as possible. It is quite a realistic admission on our part that we will not be able to cater to everyone and pack in everything. But we have come up with something that we are calling Around the World of Women's Cricket in 80 Seconds, a segment that will give you some news and views that should allow you to stay up to speed with women's cricket. And Ananya, the good news for you is your time starts now. Well, the series to end all series is around the corner. The Women's Ashes begins on June 22nd with the Test Match at Trent Bridge. Remember, Australia will have no Meg Lanning. Instead, Alyssa Healy has been named captain with Talia McGrath as her deputy. Meanwhile, England have announced their squad and Danielle Gibson and Lauren Filer have earned maiden call-ups, while it looks like Alice Capsey is in line to make her Test Match debut. Now over in Rwanda, the Kwibuka Women's T20 Trophy is underway where the hosts Rwanda are playing against Uganda, Botswana, Kenya and Nigeria. Meanwhile, Ireland have announced their squad for the tour of the West Indies beginning on June 26th. Amy Maguire, the young left arm spinner, has earned a maiden call-up while Jane Maguire and Shauna Kavanaugh miss out due to injury. And finally, New Zealand are preparing for their tour of Sri Lanka, scheduled to begin on June 27th. The squad will be announced soon. That was our inaugural segment of Around the World of Women's Cricket in 80 Seconds on TWCP. And thank you for all the tidbits that you shared with us. But to all our followers, viewers, listeners tuning into this show, this episode, there is one more reasonably high profile tour that you should be looking forward to. And that is India Women's impending tour of Bangladesh, which was originally penciled in for June though the itinerary or the schedule of it was never really announced, is still not announced, is not available in the public domain. But uh, we are given to understand, Ananya Opindran and Onesha Ghosh, the co-hosts of the Women's Cricket Podcast with Onesha and Ananya, are given to understand that the tour is now likely to take place in July. And the Indian Women's Cricket team are likely to leave for Bangladesh on 6th of July. That's a tentative date that we have as uh, a piece of information right now. That particular tour will be India's only away series in all likelihood in 2023 because the next three series that India play are all going to be on their home soil with South Africa being the first tourists to arrive in India most likely in November. Yes, they do not play any international series between this Bangladesh tour and the arrival of South Africa. And following South Africa, um, playing that series on Indian soil will come England and they will play a limited over series and at least one test match we are going to understand. And after that, the tourists will be none other than the Australian women's cricket team who were, of course, the last opponents India played against and uh, that face-off obviously panned out at Newlands where India went on to lose the semi-final of the T20 World Cup. But we are not going to reminisce the lost semi-final of India's right now 
because we are going to beam our focus on the upcoming tour of Bangladesh where one player is almost a certainty as far as featuring in the squad is concerned and that player did make a splash when Australia toured India the last time around and that was in December 2022. We are talking about a player who happens to be at least the only other left arm bowler aside from Monica Patel to have featured in an India 11 as a pace bowler since Monica Patel's debut and that player, that left arm pacer, did also go on to feature at the WPL, played at the T20 World Cup in South Africa and has made an entry into the BCCI central contracts roster for 2022-2023 and we are talking about none other than Anjali Sarwani and she happens to be the first ever guest on the Women's Cricket Podcast. Joining us as our first guest of the Women's Cricket Podcast is India left arm pacer Anjali Sarwani. Anjali, a very, very warm welcome to you. This is something of a historic moment for the three of us, for Ananya, Anjali and Onesha. All our names start with A, so maybe that's a connecting link for us to begin with. Thanks for being here. What are you up to these days? Just in the camp, getting, uh, it's very hectic. I have, I have never done an NCA camp like this so far because normally in NCA camp we'll have a lot of breaks but I think this is the first camp which there is not, not many breaks. What is this camp about though? Tell us a bit about that maybe. It's just like a targeted camp for senior players. Uh, there is there, Simultaneously there was a camp going on for under 23 which uh, it is happening in Alur. They are be, they'll be heading for uh, the under 23 Asia Cup. And this is more of, you know, just targeting the senior players and make, make them fit for the coming tournaments. Speaking of the coming tournaments, there is that, you know, tour to Bangladesh um, that's coming up. Um, have you thought about that at all during this camp? Is that something that's running in your mind? Uh, I thought about it before even before this camp. <laughs> uh, I was thinking, I don't know whether it is a fully T20 or fully one day. I, I heard it's three T20 and three one day tournament. So I was thinking as I'm, al- I'm already in T20 mode from almost a year, I haven't played one one day tournament in the last year. So uh, it was, I was thinking about the one day, how I have to be, first of all, I was thinking about my fitness. One day is like completely different. So I was thinking, okay, I was thinking, I kept one day in my mind and I was preparing for one day for this Bangladesh and whatever is coming next. You've already stepped into a new league of sorts, a new era in your own career. And that has happened in the very recent past through the central contracts roster for 2022-23 that was announced. Congratulations on that, Anjali. What has the feeling been like, uh, you know, ever since you got to know that you are going to be part of the BCCI central contracts list for the first time? I have I have never thought about this contract and I've never seen also, con- I used to see contract, I don't know how they pick the t- players or, you know, I, I have no idea. I, even I didn't know that I was in the contract list. One of my friends has messaged me, he's like, congratulations, I'm like, what? There's nothing going on right now, why are you congratulating me? Uh, she's like, you are in the contract. I was like, what? Let me check. I was in the shock. I, have, I was already, I was only thinking about playing for India or whatever is coming. I had no idea about this contract at all. I, it was not at all in my mind. It was like complete shock for me. So who was this friend? Let us make the friend as famous on social media and on our YouTube channel, which we've just launched. Uh, who is this friend and where were you when you got to know of the news? Uh, it was Nuzat, Nuzat Parvini. I we play for railways. I don't know what she was doing in BCCI app that time. Just <laughs> randomly saw, I guess, because it was not in the news or it was not in any of the social media. I just randomly night at, at nine o'clock or something, or I don't remember. It was early morning or night. Sometime they have announced it. So it was like, it was like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> I just then I realized it and then I searched for it and I was like, oh, I, that was, I, I couldn't say anything because that was literally like a shock for me. 
but now that you've got the contract i guess um yeah. and it's been a bit of a while that you know the news is kind of sunk in i guess how does it feel to be a contracted player to have that sense of security um and be able to kind of invest more in your game and and improve slightly faster being in the contract gives the extra uh, like you don't have the pressure of you know even if if i want to go somewhere else outside of hyderabad or anywhere so i have the security that i can uh, invest a lot better compared to what i'm investing right now and um uh, i think it even now the matches they have increased the match fees or everything has been increased so it gives a little more security of uh, like how the men's feel now we are able to feel like almost the same, not same as they are feeling but at, at least 50% of their they have the security anywhere they go so we, now we are in that uh, comfort position where you, we can invest on anything it's a so lovely that you say that because we personally feel we've been covering women's cricket for a while now ananya started much before than i did she's played cricket you call her akka for a reason because you've been uh, playing against each other for a while now but isn't it a great time to be a female cricketer in india uh, anjali given everything that is happening around you you know we'll definitely talk about your extraordinary debut uh, in international cricket but looking back on how things have unfolded for you personally this is a great time for you personally to be donning the india jersey and playing the league that you are playing uh, as far as the wpl is concerned tell us a bit about how does anjali sarwani make of everything that is happening around women's cricket in india right now i think so many people have told you are the luckiest person i guess in this <laughs> entire indian team you are the first cricketer who has entered and you know has earned what they haven't earned it's like anjali came in and she's got that she she has never suffered or anything she's just coming in and she's getting it and i it is literally i feel it's i'm lucky i'm very happy for it because uh, i've seen a lot of players who play for indian railways as i see them struggle even though they are playing for india it it's very difficult but when i got the opportunity and all the things were in the right place they are going smoothly so i was thinking it would be actually very difficult if i was also facing those things even though i have i've been playing so many cricketers if you see they have played hundreds of games for india but they have not earned like how i am earning right now it's like i'm getting everything which they wanted at at those times and uh, i'm very grateful for it which is happening for me right now and i'm not even you know thinking that uh, i can i'll take it light or something i'm feeling more excited as if i want more now like i want to do well i want to explore uh, cricket now as how it is growing you obviously touched upon you know you came in and and all sorts of things have happened one of the big things that's happened is that wpl something that you know a lot of us have been you know harping about for a very very long time and it it finally happened um you were obviously part of the up warriors team um got an opportunity to play with some um incredible players um also your first international wicket talia magra was your teammate um i guess uh, what was that experience like um if you can start off with the auction day you guys were sitting together watching that um can you tell us a bit about that as i was saying the auction i i, I honestly thought i'm going to get unsold because i've seen a lot of players who are really good which i know that you know they've got unsold i was like they have been playing for so many years and they got unsold and i was like i just started I think there's no chance for me to even You're you know my face there Anjali I it, <laughs> no it doesn't at that point of time nothing came in my mind I just thought I was just thinking about my uh, data of five games that was my five games I've just played for in, international and before that I just got recognized after playing for Indian Railways when I was playing for Andhra I was not like Anj- there is someone like Anjali Sharma no one knew about me so i was i was like not in a clear picture for anything i was i was gone <laughs> but i i didn't know that my name will even appear there because of you know seeing the other players who ever came and sh- within seconds they were getting unsold and it was little daunting at that time but then when my name came i just hope just lift your hand don't even pay me anything just take me in your team i just wanted that <laughs> and do you remember what 
exactly happened right after that battle went up and you were officially sold you were going to play in the WPL walk us through those recollections anjali for you having played just those five matches and all the data probably that you were looking up on one of the websites seeing that your sample size is just five as far as international cricket is concerned but then to be sold for 55 lakhs to the up warriors what did that feel like at that moment i was just hoping for one person to raise then i saw two to three people were raising for me then i was like oh these people know about me i was like, i was in shock how do they know about me i haven't played so much of cricket i was not in the live in the tv or anywhere else so uh, when up up warriors have taken me then i was like uh, i just wanted to know more about up warriors you know who all got selected then when i when i knew that Deep, deepthi sharma rajeshwari gaikwad all the top bowlers sophia eckelston it was like the best bowling lineup we had then i was like wow i am going to be part of such a experienced players where i can learn a lot i think if you see the other teams compared to them we have lot of experienced bowlers in our side so i i was very happy for it i didn't expect me playing for rcb or the big teams you know for the men's teams who are already established i actually thought i should be in a team where i should not feel the pressure from outside so i was very happy that up i was as part of up warriors who was the first person you called or texted about you having been picked up at the auction do you remember who that person friend family was it was my parents only they were already calling me they were on the line when you know it was happening they they, they were like when immediately when i was sold for up warriors my mom and dad were like they were the one who who were on the call at that time so i i didn't use my phone at all after that i left it aside i didn't even talk to anyone i just talked to my parents and that's it i just sat, sat back and I, i was still watching i wanted to know who all were there but i was more excited for whatever is happening at that moment i spoke to my parents and there was a small interview kind of thing for uh, up warriors and that's it and i left my phone i sat i watched the entire auction and then just left <laughs> now coming back to that team and you you mentioned all those experienced bowlers that you know that you had an opportunity to learn from i guess who was that one person um there were a lot of very very accomplished players in that team but was there one person whose ear you were constantly in asking questions um, and who were you who did you i guess become fast friends with amongst the the overseas contingent uh i picked uh, like all of them i was good with all of them i guess because uh, i was very excited to play with them because i've been playing with i played with uh, deepthi raja the devika we were all part of uh, the world cup and it was i was already a uh, conversation i was so excited to talk to the foreigners and especially mm-hmm. i thought sophie was someone you know sophie uh, is very smart bowler if for england she has done well in every format so i was so excited for her you know to what she thinks in a t20 game because she's very good in t20s and then we had the best i can't even tell we have almost the, everyone who i needed in the team <laughs> shabnam was there i was i was so sh- surprised that i would sit with shabnam and talk something you know i have never thought would happen she uh, she gave me such a simple uh, normally what we we indians we think we have so many things to do at the same time we keep we'll think that we have to do this 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 but they have very clear mind they just have two things to do in the game which we miss out so there was their uh, way of telling was very simple we know what we have to do they just do it what we do is we just make things complicated thinking that i can do this so that i'll try this uh, shabnam used to tell me you are you are very good in swing just think about it why you want to do something else they were even though it's a t20 game and we know in t20 the batsmen try to hit but their way of keeping things simple is like the basic thing which we have to think about so actually uh, that helped me a lot from the first game to the last game of the wpl a lot of stuff needs unpacking from that one answer and i can see 
your answer has already piqued Ananya's curiosity. I'll throw the floor to her. But before that, I, I really want to know more about all the conversations you had with Shabna Ismail. We are speaking with you at a time she has already left international cricket. It took a lot of people by surprise. Did it surprise you as well? What were your immediate reactions like when you saw Shabna Ismail calls it quits in international cricket? I was also very surprised. I was like, why are you doing this? I was like, please, please play more. She's so fit. Even though she's not so, she's not, not so tall. She's shorter than me. And she bowls 126, 128 so easily. It looks like, you know, she's just running like a machine. She's like, uh, even if she runs, it's so fast. She's so fit. I didn't expect her you know, to get retired so quickly. And I don't know why she even took the decision. I think she'll play WPL. I hope she doesn't do like she doesn't quit from it. Um, she's a very simple person. She doesn't take, make things so complicated. She uh, knows what she does, and she only tells that you use the new ball in the power play. And when you're coming off the power play, just try to bowl Yorkers or slower ones. That's it. She doesn't even ask me to do anything else. She doesn't tell if there's a wicket is flat or the boundary is small. It doesn't matter to her. It's just you have three abilities. Just try to execute those three perfectly in the game. And that's it. And you're done. You don't have to think about how, much, how many wickets you've got or how many runs you've got hit. Just try to uh, execute whatever you have learned. You touched upon a very interesting facet about fast bowling and here we have my fellow journalist co-host on this podcast who is or was also a fast bowler but does it occur to you often that being the height you are and if you could also share with us if you're comfortable with it what your height is and does having a shabnam a smile as a mentor who is very short statured give you a degree of confidence if Shabna Ismail can dominate world cricket with her pace, with that height, so can Anjali Sarwani. I've actually I've inspired a lot because of after seeing her with in WPL because watching her in TV is different, and when I saw her uh, the way she trains or the way she you know she's so aggressive with her height she's able to get gain such a pace. She it's very it it looks like anyone can do it. It's not I used to think height matters because. People tell that height matters for a pacer. You have to be a tall enough to get that bounce or you, for anything. But when I when I had the conversation with her, it was like, you can do it. You can get there. It's just a matter of time, how much you spend your time in your fitness. How do you, you know, it's not about how many balls you bowl. It's about how many balls you can bowl faster. That is what she does. She bowls two overs and she gives the best in those two overs. It will be 126, 125, 126. It's uh, that's what she says. What if you're bowling four overs, you need to make your body bowl every ball in that same pace. Then you can achieve the targets like 120. When you reached 120, you need to bowl consistently 120. Not one ball 120 and the other balls 100, 110. It doesn't. It doesn't matter then. So that's what she said. And what's your height, Anjali? I'm. Um, Five, I think 5.3, 5.3, yeah. Right. Over to Team Pacer or the originator of that hashtag, Ananya, because I'm pretty sure she's going to ask you a truckload of questions around pace bowling right away. Over to you. I've seen a lot of yeah. in balls. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is not Team Pacer. This is Team Inswinger, me and Anjali. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hashtag, follow us on Instagram, Facebook. Twitter and YouTube, everyone, and use Ananya's hashtag wherever applicable, please. <laughs> My questions are not so much about fast bowling as like, I think in all your answers, one thing that's really come through is just how uh, people from different countries approach the game. Like yeah. you said, in India, we kind of overcomplicate things. Everything is about technique or everything is about, you know, um, planning, over planning in, in many senses. I guess how much has that exposure, not just to international players, but overseas coaches as well, 
Uh, how much has that, I guess, impacted the way you now, um, you know, look at your own progress or or how you want to plan your development, I guess? I think, yeah, when I worked with uh, Ash was a bowling coach for us in WPL. And before that, I was with Troy in the World Cup. I, uh, Troy was also, you know, so simple. No, no complications. He used to just tell me, uh, do this, do that. That's it. You're, you're done. And at, when I, when I, that actually helped me because I worked with Troy and I came to one of, again, he's an Australian who is with us in WPL. And he was under Troy when he used to play. The one who was my coach in WPL. It was like a connection. And the way they uh, make very uh, simple things, even the plans which they tell before the game, it's so simple. It's, they don't complicate. They just tell uh, if the wicket which I got Laura bowled, it was purely ash. It was not me. I would have never done that. If I was, if they, he would have given me the chance, what would you do? I would think I'll just bowl my bowling. I'll just bowl from over the wicket and give my in swing an opportunity. But because of him, I was bowling round the wicket for her, which I would never done it in my thoughts. Or even if our coaches, whoever is here, wouldn't have thought about it. They would just tell, wait until your swing stops and then you come for round the wicket. No one never tells me, you know, even if you are an in-swinger, come round the wicket, make, create more angle. So a lot of things I have learned from them. It's, and they're not something technically or something like that. Just about the way we think about the same process. It's a just saying it in a different way. Obviously, that's now going to help you when you play for India, when you play for Indian Railways. Um, those are things that you that you have the opportunity to then implement. But I guess, have you seen your conversations? Uh, I know you haven't had the opportunity to play matches, but your, your conversations with, you know, other Indian fast bowlers change um, about how you can do things, even in the nets now that you're in camp. Um, have you been having conversations about these types of things, how you're going to bowl to batters in the nets and stuff like that? Yeah, uh, now Shikadi just joined. I didn't have an opportunity with her from till now. But when we did in the World Cup, when I was in the nets with them, with Renuka and uh, Shikadi, they, even they had in-swingers just like me. So, but they're completely different. Shikadi uh, is a different bowler and Renuka is a different bowler. So, they, yeah, even Renuka tells me, uh, trust your swing. You know, don't go away from your swing, even though when there are flat wickets or uh, whatever it is, doesn't matter. You trust your swing and then you do something different when it doesn't help you. Even with Shikadi, it's the same thing, almost similar, what they tell. But uh, what Shikadi has more experience than Renuka. Shikadi, uh, you know, tells me how you how I can do around the wicket, how can I bowl Yorkers means the technical stuff like you can do this to get better and uh, even Renuka you can do this D try to learn that like you just you should have an options like you should not be an in-swing bowler you should have to have something you know go a straighter one or you know a slower one or you definitely have to master something else so when I was uh, when I came into the Indian side for the Australian series I was good at in-swing and I was good at slower ones I was not good at the outswing ball, which I slowly, slowly, slowly it came till like three, four months. And now I'm able to, you know, not do so well, but I'm trying to execute it. It was only because of them telling me like, you have to do this. Otherwise, you know, there's, you can't grow. There's always, we have to keep, if, if I have to get selected for India, it's not only just for my swing. I have to do something else better than that. Like day by day, I have to keep doing well. I think with Renuka and Shikadi and Pooja, it is, this is the thing that they have uh, asked me to work on and I've been working on. Anjali, one of the things that I've really noticed about you in this last, I guess, 20, 25 minutes and watching you on TV for the last um, six months or so, um, the difference between that small left-arm pacer who used to play for Andhra and this other small left-arm pacer who plays for India and UP Warriors 
um is that is the confidence um you were always we always saw you as you know very anandra in the sense that you were aggressive on the field you had like very positive body language but you're also now you know so confident when you speak when you interact with other people um how do you see your development as a person i know it's a very big question to throw at you but from someone watching you it's a massive change i guess have you kind of recognized that um i think i was little like a shy kid when i was playing for andhra i was not like you know i was not open for i was not even aggressive like how i am right now in on the field i think uh i started being more open after joining railways when i joined railways no i know i have to set the standards if i am not doing it there's no opportunity for me to play but when i was in andhra it was like i was getting opportunities every game even though when i did bad i know next game is i'm going to play the next game and that too i was very young when i was playing for andhra i was like having fun i was a fun kid that time but things got serious after lockdown i was like you have to i was doing well but it, i didn't know what uh, what takes me to you know get better or what are what should i improve you know to at least play with the best players so i think that changed from when i was playing for andhra for now <laughs> so anjali would you say that given the railways have been the powerhouse in indian women's domestic cricket and there is a lot of competition as you said they can field an india 11 on any given day has that element of competition really helped you evolve into a better athlete better bowler in the past few months or in the past few years that you've been associated with the railways yes uh, i think uh, having the first camp with railways i have realized a lot of things in the first camp itself i knew that first year was not my i'm not going to get an opportunity immediately i knew for myself that i uh, when i i think i played just one game for indian railways the first year which i played then i went back home and i did my homework i was like next year no matter who is there like that time uh, if you see renuka meghna singh s meghna snehana punam yadav ek ekta best all of them were playing for the current world cup side at that point of time so i had zero place if you see there's there's no place if you because renuka is going to play in the 11 meghna singh is going to play in the 11 when they come back so uh, i was very uh, particular about how i'm going to bowl or how many how much i was doing my fitness and i want i wanted to be in the 11 and the next year i think we played one days and i just played two games again and from one it was two it was a progress for me but then i uh, realized there will be an opportunity one tournament or any time that when renuka is going somewhere for a tour or something will happen which will help me so luckily she went for a commonwealth game i guess renuka and meghna singh both were not there it was like an open chance for me then i was like now it's an opportunity i have to grab otherwise this this is the end then when they come back i won't have an opportunity but i did very well that was t20s they were not there in the league phase and they joined in the super league stage i was fully tensed i was like i i have done well but okay anjali this is your last day of your match you will be sitting out and giving water bottles and then i remember that time uh, nuzat uh, was my roommate i guess so she said don't worry you it's okay you have done well in your league stage you have given them them an opportunity to you know think about you to make you play in the 11 so you just hope you just you'll be there don't think you will not be there by surprise i was in the 11 with renuka i was like wow i've created that opportunity for them for the coaches to think about me in place of them and by end of that tournament the finals i was the only pacer who played the final renuka sat out Meghna Singh sat out. It was a final. Imagine if if it's a final, you'll play the best players. Then Renuka was the highest wicket taker in overseas. She just played an amazing tournament and she came 
and she sat out it's not because she's done well uh, she's not done well it's because they wanted me to give an opportunity because it doesn't uh, even if renuka plays or doesn't play it doesn't matter she will be playing for india anyways they gave me the opportunity to you know to just go for it go into the finals and do well and i have done well and that match has helped me give lot of confidence that final that i thought i am worth till then even though i was playing in the 11 i was not thinking that okay i i, I was little nervous i was not uh, backing my ability but that finals and i won the match for the team it made me more uh, you know confident i got a lot of confidence from that tournament and it carried on from there since that match and that tournament proved so pivotal something of a turning point in your career and you speak with such uh, gratitude uh, anjali and it's so lovely to see that from a young pacer young india cricketer can you also name who your captain was your coach was can you pick a few names from uh, the railways management i think uh, mithu ji was the mentor at that tournament uh, noshin ji was the coach and rana was the captain and uh, they called me in the morning itself before the game that you are playing you are the only they have already mentioned that you are only play, play pacer you are going to bowl and we had the finals against uh, maharashtra smriti was playing for that team and uh, i have never bowled to smriti never i have never i just saw her playing i have never bowled to her and uh, they told me that she is the only player in their team who is you know who who can um, make us trouble because she is so used to our bowlers it's like a gift to her it's like easy for her to play against us because she's been playing against all the uh, bowlers which we have so uh, and then they told me as a batting you have to go and hit you are you are someone who attacks and we want you to you know do both i was gone i was like i went to my room and i was like oh my god i'm playing in the finals that was my first finals because i've never played finals before uh, with andhra i had played some 2018 something i was very young that time i was didn't know it finals i didn't feel like finals i was just i just played but when it comes to railways i ha- i was in a different mind mindset that it was a finals which railways had a reputation to win always and they are giving me an opportunity you know to do that and it made me more nervous and it was even like a boost up for me like they so confident in me in my abilities and i actually did very well that game and for those of our viewers and listeners who did not pick up who the rana and the smriti was she was obviously referring to sne rana and smriti mandhana yeah. the left hand india opener and also for our viewers who may not be totally keyed into your journey can you tell us when did you make that transition from andhra to railways uh, because you did reference renuka playing at the commonwealth games so you are obviously talking about 2022 where renuka was a standout performer swinging it both ways uh, 2020 i uh, debuted for railways so right be- right after the lockdown uh i before lockdown i was playing for andhra and after lockdown i was directly selected for the camp which happened in bangalore that time renuka was not part of uh, railways uh only meghna singh was there meghna singh was there yeah uh, arundhati meghna singh me shubhlakshmi i think you would have heard about her shubhlakshmi she was the one of the best fast bowlers those times and she was there i uh, my first year was with them and the second season renuka was in the team but she didn't play for india she was with us she was doing really well and uh, she already was playing for india a she was already there in that uh, you know that mark where uh, renuka had a reputation and she came with that and she just played two games i guess she was in some tour and she came and she played the finals and semi finals she, she got uh, karnataka all out <laughs> she bowled like she got four wickets in four overs i guess and it was a one day final and they got all out for 60 runs and 67. we won it one sided yeah and uh, renuka was amazing in that tournament and immediately after that she got selected for the india and she did amazing there and her journey started like this and where i was one step back waiting for my opportunity at that time and because of her immediately next year she got selected for the commonwealth and she she was in england so that gave me an opportunity to play the 
and renuka singh thakur kept on taking more four wicket hauls and the love yeah, affair continued everywhere. thereafter yeah, continued. <laughs> well um anjali let's rewind a little bit since we touched upon andhra um and you know you playing for them uh i guess first i think let's i don't know should we rewind totally and ask how did and how did cricket become part of your life i guess um i th- i think that's something that a lot of people will want to know um because i read i i mean you were an athlete so how did cricket become part of your life uh because of my dad i didn't i was not ready to choose cricket i wanted to do athletics because i i was already uh doing well in athletics i was i was a 100 meter sprinter and i was even working for it i had a separate trainer and i was working under him but my dad just wanted me to you know just go for it it was just like a time pass he t- just told me just go for a summer camp just learn how cricket is i used to play with my f- friends and all gully cricket and all so he he was like okay let's just go lot of people had told my dad just send your daughter in cricket also why is just athletics let her you know learn cricket and then i we started i i went for a summer camp and then uh, in that summer camp those coaches told me just come for a selection matches there are selections now it will happen just come for it and then like okay my dad was like okay let's take her then i went for the selections and i first 50 i scored my first game i it was i can't even tell you i don't remember anything of about, about that game i just remember i scored a 50 and i don't even know how i scored i didn't even know how to play at that time and uh, they were like okay she she did well let let take her in the next selections and my dad was in a doubt that time he was like okay this is getting serious now we need to choose we can't do both at the same time then i i was very young at that time i didn't have any idea of you know uh, this is my dream i didn't have any dreams i just wanted to play or do uh, i was i just wanted to be part of something of sports so he decided is like okay cricket has lot of uh, opportunities in the future he even knew mithali the lot of cricketers at that time they didn't have so much recognition but he had known P- purnima rao so many names he told me that i haven't even saw them i think maybe he had he knows about cricket i didn't know about it he just like just let's go into cricket so like that i started uh, you know playing cricket <laughs> and then those early years in andhra i mean uh, do you remember playing your first age group tournament for andhra was it an under 16 or under 19 tournament yeah under 16 i remember it was i think in kerala we played uh, we had a tournament in kerala and i don't remember much about it because uh, i think i played a game or two i don't even remember but first tournament i was i had a lot of fun with all the players and then the next year i got i started playing more games in the zonals and there there is a academy for women in andhra and it was in guntur and i used to get selected there i used to be there for a longer time and then i started uh, getting to know much about cricket can you kind of give us a sense of who were those coaches who had a big impact on your career at the start who like taught you the basics of the game um, you said that the residential academy in guntur as well um, so just can you give us a sense of who was that support system who built anjali uh starting times it was shaker who was who is a, a coach from our district i play for karnul district so he was a coach there he and venkatesh who is from my hometown in my summer camp they were the people who you know who made my basics like who were the start of my basics and then when i start started going to guntur and it was uh, srinivas reddy and maria fahe uh, she used to play for new zealand when i started playing cricket and she was also there at the same time it uh, helped me a lot you know she used to talk a lot she is someone who talks so much so at st- uh, when we had so many camps with her in guntur she used to tell me so many things which you know some elite cricketer will understand i i was never able to understand what she was trying to tell but uh, i think because of her being w- there with us for almost 4 to 5 years helped me a lot in uh, you know learning about uh, i didn't know anything about fitness or how uh, 
technical things or you know how we have to think about games or planning nothing i had no idea because of srinivas reddy sir and uh, maria fahe uh, it i started uh, developing myself in a different way it's just fascinating listening to you anjali speak of the shrinivas reddies and the maria fahes and the very important role that the andhra residential academy played and has played in the history of women's cricket in india and just a few minutes ago you also spoke of renuka who happens to be a product of the himachal pradesh uh, cricket association residential women's cricket academy so to all the viewers and listeners listening to us watching anjali sarwani speak here's a moment that we as hosts of uh, this podcast ananya uh and myself would want to take to thank you know all the people who had the foresight to start launch these residential women's cricket academies because without them we wouldn't have had an anjali sarwani uh, a renuka singh thakur and very many others who've been products of these academies so uh, kudos to the andhra cricket association and the hpca cricket uh, association for doing what they did with a lot of foresight a lot of uh, you know uh, far sightedness around growing the women's game and speaking of far sightedness you did mention that uh, you know your father was a very instrumental played a very instrumental role in your growth please do take his name so that uh, the world gets to know about this great man who let his daughter do a lot of things with freedom which in our country not very many parents do so kudos to him as well tell us a bit uh, about your father as well and is there any other athlete in your family at all my grandfather my uh, dad's both brothers are uh, players my grandfather is an athlete he 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 was he did even do a veterans as well and my my one of my dad's brother is a football player and the other one is a cricketer my dad was the only guy who didn't play but he is the only guy who supported his child the other brothers have never supported their kids what's his name anjali what's his name my my dad's name is kv ramna rao and he's a teacher uh he hasn't played anything he's just a normal guy who used to study but both of his brothers were into athletics they never used to study <laughs> but my dad i don't know how he he's like okay you he started uh, not even me my brother my uh, my brother he is uh, 13 year old he is asking him also to join anything because not right now people give lot of importance for studies because of what is happening right now but even now my dad is like let's give him also an opportunity let's see what he does it's not, uh, with me it's okay because at that time he didn't get the opportunity of doing he used to tell me i never got an opportunity of you know doing this or that so i want to do that to you so many times he has told me this not only about uh, you know sports generally when uh, when i was in school i wanted to go to some trip with the they should they they took us to hyderabad for three days i just asked him dad can i go so he was like go my dad never sent me i'll send you i'll send you wherever you want to go he was in that kind of mindset from the starting the kind of role the fathers of india women cricketers have played in helping put together a team is unimaginable beat the shrinivas mandana the harman dar singh bhullar harman peet's father mithali raj's father mr dorai raj and of course your father now jeet rishas father ram reddy you know literally created a world cup winner from scratch so thanks to all the fathers in india who back their kids not just their daughters but also their sons to do their thing but uh, without your support i don't think it would have been possible for us to get these accidental talents who do great things for the women's team and anjali did a fair share of great things for the indian women's team including the fact the very casual thing that she did uh, was featuring in a historic uh, series against australia women where india ended up winning their first super over contest it was her debut series anjali tell us a bit about that your maiden international call up playing against a team like australia they have also been very very instrumental in helping indian women's cricket grow how big a moment was playing in that series for you in december 2022 at the revive patel stadium in navi mumbai i was very nervous for the first day of the session i was 
even wearing the practice clothes i was feeling different i don't know why i didn't even get the debut cap but still just looking at the clothes i was still in the moment like is this happening with me i was i never expected me you know i i had dream but you know being living in that it was like i couldn't believe it that i was going to go with the team now i see them on tv there's just a glimpse of a video of indian team practicing here i used to see that in instagram or anywhere but now i was part of it it was like you know i'm going to experience what they have experienced till now and uh, that tournament actually helped me a lot because it was australia who the best side like who be who's beat who's never lost till then the, that was the first match they have lost and i was very excited to bowl you know such a great players who are the openers like the, they are the best uh, opening lineup they had you know they were uh, always hammering every bowler every time they had the best partnerships in batting even though in the last 10th batsman also comes and you know does something incredible for them uh, the <laughs> and then when i went for the first uh, practice session i was little nervous because i haven't met harmandi i haven't seen her that was the first time that i'm i was seeing her and smriti i've seen her before but i had i had never and i had never had a conversation with her I, it was like a different thing like you know interacting with someone you know has done so many so so much good for india and me the first person i was the only debut player no there was no other uh, you know who was who was debuted everyone were already playing with each other so i was very nervous and after the first uh, practice session uh, harmandi came to me and she's like i know you are nervous that is why i didn't come to you uh, i just want to tell you that it's okay to be nervous uh, then she started talking to me while i was bowling to her in the nets and she started communicating you know do this do that and she was telling how the australians play because i only saw them i never bowled to them so she used to tell me okay heely does this or talia does that they were the first first lineup so just keep doing that don't uh, think you know just trust yourself she gave a lot of confidence to me even it was not the game just the practice uh, net session and the next day uh, when i got to know that i am going to get debuted i was super excited i was so excited i wanted to get scoldings from harmandi because i saw harmandi scolding lot of players i saw how she scolded deepthi on that semi final to take that double i was repeatedly seeing that video many times i've seen it so i was like i want to experience everything you know, whatever happens on the field i was i was so excited i couldn't sleep the night and all the, it was it took 40 minutes i guess to reach the ground all of them were sleeping i was like i should not sleep i should watch the road i should enjoy every moment till the bus reaches whatever happens i was like so excited to play and i didn't think about my bowling i was like i just ex- i was wanted to experience it and i experienced it fully from the burst till i reached the warm up everything i was so excited <laughs> yeah i think she's going to have a laugh when she watches this what has it been like playing under harmanpreet ever since the probable um ice was broken between you and harmanpreet obviously she knows the australians inside out and you said how it helped you but over the course of that series and then for you to go to uh, south africa what has that interaction been like and how do you think that relationship between you and harmandi has evolved over the past few months um i think uh, harmandi didn't knew about me doing my she knows that i am a good swing bowler but she hasn't seen me personally uh, and in uh, mumbai there were flat wickets you can't expect swing at that time even renka was not getting such swing at that time but uh, when she saw me bowling when she was in the mid off and i was you know talia was getting beaten for me and all the players good players of australian team were you know struggling a bit at least two to three balls in an over they they got they were struggled so uh, she was like trust yourself she was so happy you know i was doing what i had done. i was i i was asked for and even when uh, in the meeting also we we lost the first game but still they she had a good points she used to tell me like you have done well it's not that to, i know this is your first game but still you have done very well being your first game you have you have bowled well 
you have done whatever you have planned for so uh, the first game actually when i i think i bowled very well in the first game i was i got so much confidence after bowling like that do you remember what you felt um when you had that new ball in your hand do you remember the th- all the thoughts running in your head or was it let's just enjoy this i, I was just thinking don't think about anything now there's nothing you can lose this is the ultimate thing which is in your hands and that and even the crowd i had never played with 10 people around me that was the first time that i was playing ar- around so many people it was so loud that i was not able to think anything because of the sound there's nothing comes in your mind it's blank you can't even think about anything because of the uh, screaming that they scream around you and i think because of the crowd also i was i was not you know thinking about something maybe if, if i was thinking that i have to do this that i would have done something horrible <laughs> <laughs> possibly so did yeah. the crowd shout anything at you at any point when you went to field on the boundary were people did people scream your name no no they were just uh, not in the australia series but in wpl it was like they were screaming the names but in australia series it was just encouraging it was like screams when whenever uh there was a good stop or whenever they used to get uh, beaten or bowled it was like that uh, one second of scream was like wow you just uh, want to do that that is your ultimate dream i don't think so you know play a lot of people seeing you watching you and do well and they also expect from you that you you will be doing well and when you don't do well also they just scream about it <laughs> but apart from that it was fun So before we I I like the fact that you brought up the crowd and there's so much to ask about that but before we do that and before I forget my question um like one of the things that has come through this conversation is obviously the jump that is international cricket a lot of people talk about you know how domestic cricket and international cricket there's absolutely no comparison you played you've played a lot of domestic cricket but even with that experience to go and play international cricket how big was that jump for you and you know how do you think you coped with it um i think when in the domestic uh, matches even if i bowl a, a ball which is a fuller length the batsman it doesn't go for a boundary it goes into the hands but in international cricket one ball just a meter meter here and there and it is gone you don't have any room for errors i realized that in australia and you, australians are very good you know picking a ball which is not even a bad ball you can't even tell that it's a bad ball even for a good ball they'll just smack you so when i was playing in domestic even the balls which were not you know for not a wicket taking balls i used to get wickets but when it comes to international there's no room for error one mistake and you are your over even though you've bowled five good balls one bad ball will you know change the game completely or change the way you want to bowl the next over i think that is a lot of difference from the domestic and international and then i guess on that front obviously the margin for error is so different sometimes good balls will go for boundaries how does that then reflect in the way you judge your own performance because i think what happens with a lot of indians is we are very critical of ourselves especially bowlers we we tend to kind of over analyze our performances sometimes so how have you then you know kind of been able to i guess been a, be a little more relaxed and like just focus on okay did i bowl the bowl, ball that i wanted to bowl i i guess how has that changed for you or has it changed at all yeah i th- uh, before i used to get very annoyed i think in the first game when i played for uh, india I, i was very annoyed even it was about it was i didn't wanted it go for a boundary but when it would have gone for a boundary i used to think i shouldn't have bowled that ball but it was even though it is a good ball i used to think that how she is able to play that ball what should i bowl next and i used to think something else and bowl some other ball instead of doing the same thing what we try to do is we uh, think even though if the good ball if she, if it is gone for a boundary we try to change our lens or you know line uh over the period i started uh, understand that i have to keep doing the same thing even though it's a good ball that let's clap for the batsman that's a good ball and she hit a boundary now i just have to do it again let's see if she can do it again 
it's like a challenge you have to just keep doing it once you'll get successful once you don't get successful it doesn't matter but we just have to stick to our plans given you've already mentioned a few australian names and we've spoken at length how big an influence australia have been and australians have been in your own career and the growth of women's cricket in india in the past few months and years you've mentioned troy cooley the former india bowling coach ashley nofki who was working with the uh, up warriors of the wpl what was it like working with alisa healy you know whom you were opponents with you were part of the opposition during the australia series and then she becomes your captain at the wpl and i got to see from twice quite close quarters that she was you know getting along with the indians very very well it brought out a different side to her personality which is quite different to how social media perceives alisa healy in my opinion strictly personal opinion but tell us a bit about what it was like working with somebody who's won n number of world cups and is regarded one of the best all time uh, players destructive batters in the women's game first when i met alisa i was very nervous and very scared because looking at her on tv she's very uh, you know she has very straight face she's always uh, ang- she looks angry but she's not she looks like you know she wants to always be angry or you know she wants everything to be done like this and she has a uh, it looks like that but when i met her personally she's she always wants to help us it never felt like you know she is australian and we were indians she used to get sad when we were not performing normally doesn't happen she she can think that okay just a wpl she can uh, you know play good matches learn something from indians and go she was not like that she was always ready to give share information she used to tell for me personally she used to tell your balls are very difficult you keep working on it uh, you'll do well because a lot of us struggled for you she used to give me confident or my bowling against them even talia she used to tell me you have bowled me and i couldn't see the ball and it made me nervous next match when i was facing you it i had in my mind that you will do it again so you have created that opportunities but you have to trust yourself i like keep doing it like all the australians or sophi or you know shabnam everyone is always ready to you know share what they they would do at that point of time and if you see grace harris she is the best finisher i haven't seen from our, my side who has done like that i think i that was my first tournament where i could see someone you know finish a game where it was nowhere for us because I, we have always come closer to the win and wish to lose if you see the semi finals or the commonwealth finals or 2017 finals everything was you know it was a close call there was not one game where we won the game but australians were doing it they were doing it like you know it's like an everyday thing for them like it's not about grace harris it's about every player of australian team are match winners and they were they are all, they are always ready to you know tell us like okay anjali when you are coming that you have to do this to restrict it's not that you are going to you know get uh, dot balls you will get hit but you should be your process should be this try to execute that and if you going for batting you need to do this you need to make sure you are doing it like continuously if you want to finish games or you know the way they finish games it's very easy to see but it's very difficult to do it and uh, there are a lot of players like that from australian team if you see everyone even just johnson finished game for delhi but we ha- we never see her batting for australia she is always in the end but when we saw that day she is a match winner we no one expects just johnson because we never saw her but australians know just johnson can finish the game for them so they have trained each player like that like in that kind of mindset i think where we have to you know do that for ourselves to uh, just the small margin of win we have against australia we we are not far away from australia we just there's a thin line we just have to cross it we are not finishing it that's it they are finishing it we are not finishing it if we learn how to do it and i i don't think so there is any team that will uh win against us everyone will struggle for us it's a sleeping giants all over again 
<laughs> no, but An Anjali, one of the things obviously that has to happen for that line to get crossed is it's a phrase that you've repeated several times over this conversation is trust yourself. Um, how easy is it to actually do that? Because on a sports field or anywhere, we are always riddled with doubt. It's very easy. You know, you're, you're always catastrophizing, making, you know, thinking that the worst possible outcome is going to happen. I guess how easy is it to trust yourself and how far along in that process are you? I think it is very, uh, it, it, to talk, it is very easy, you know, at one point of time, we'll think, uh, no, maybe I can't do it. It always comes in our mind. But uh, when we keep uh, things simple, when we know the plan, okay, this is what I have to work, do at that point of time, that makes us be uh, confident or have that trust on ourselves. Instead of, you know, thinking outside of the plans. If we just think about the plans, most of the time we think about it. Sometimes we need someone else to remind us. And because of uh, the situation, wh whatever we are going through, we forget the process. And before it was like, it used to look on the TV or, you know, on the while playing, it looks like we are confused. But right now, I think we are not like that. There is a lot of improvement in that. And now we know that uh, the, if even if we uh, miss it, someone else is there to just remind us okay this is you have to do this that's it so uh, i think that has improved a lot and that helps us you know come back to what we have to do at that point well that's a great note to be wrapping up this conversation on around optimism surrounding the indian women's cricket team and women's cricket in india and we wish you all the very best thank you very much once again for being a guest our first ever guest on the Women's Cricket Podcast with Onesha and Ananya. Keep that team pacer flag flying. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <There we go. laughs>